All right, so here we're gonna talk about the stapler. So this is what I carry. Uh, you can see AHS, uh, I forget what that stands for now. Like I said before in my previous video about the uh, first aid kits, I bought this on Amazon. Um, got another one um, that's actually in um, a big tub of extra supplies that I carry or have in my garage. It's actually behind the camera right now. Um, this is a preloaded stapler, so you can see these numbers. They go up to, there we go. You can go up to 35. As you can see, I've got just about 25 left. So I have used this on a few different dogs. I tend to clean it when I get home, um, scrub it down with some betadines, uh, rinse it off with some alcohol. Uh, I suggest that if you're ever using supplies that you can clean. Uh, if you want to stay clean, make sure it doesn't rust, rinse it off with alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol. Uh, the reason is this, is it just gets out any moisture and it evaporates really quickly. Um, I tend to, that's how I actually tend to do a lot of deep cleaning on our microscopes and things like that at work. So it's a really safe uh, product to clean things that you don't really want to um, obviously have like oil on there. Um, and, but you don't want to rust as well. So um, I've got my banana. I've already made a little cut into it. You can see this is to represent a full thickness laceration. Uh, so cut all the way through the skin. Uh, so our peel represents our skin tissue. Our actual banana that you can just barely see through that kind of represents our underlying tissue. So most likely gonna be fat, you know, if it's on the leg, probably gonna see some muscle, um, fascia, things like that. Uh, it's already starting to brown on me and I just made the cut. So, uh, so I'm gonna change the camera angle here and then we're gonna get going. All right, so here we go, got my camera angle different. Uh, so you can see now, like I said before, the, I'm gonna use the knife I'm gonna use to make the incision. So uh, you can see, obviously, we have our edges of our skin down there, the actual tissue there. Uh, so like I said, this represents a full thickness laceration. What you're gonna wanna do, this is a good representation because you're not gonna want to use this necessarily on like a big tear. Um, if there's a, you know, if, you, if the edges of the tissue don't come together really well or if you gotta pull them, staples are not something that are gonna hold tissue together uh, really tightly. Um, if we're, if I'm closing a wound or an incision made in like a high stress area, high motion area that I need to stay closed for, you know, like 10 to 14 days of healing time, uh, I'm going to use sutures. So like I said, this is to keep something closed that is hopefully either in a low motion area, has a lot of excess skin, you know, on the side, uh, you know, chest, something like that versus like the armpit, uh, next to the knee, down on, you know, uh, down around like the elbow. This could work, certainly, again, especially for short term till you can get and have it checked out and have it assessed by a veterinarian. Maybe able to work down on the antebrachium, kind of like the forelimb, things like that. So what you're gonna wanna do is once you've, you know, cleaned and scrubbed and flushed, make sure you get as much debris out as possible, get as much antiseptic on there as possible. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do so you're gonna to wanna to get those edges of those tissue as close as possible. I'm gonna see if I can hopefully do this where you can see it. And then you're gonna look there, and you're gonna see that little notch that's gonna represent the center of the staple. You can actually see the staple there. So you're gonna line that up over the wound and then just close it down. Right, and then you're gonna go about three to four millimeters away, and you can go. So it's recommended that you start in the center and work your way out on the wound. And now these won't always look as pretty, which is why I certainly never use them to close actual surgical sites, because I think they look like crap. But essentially. You get the idea that that's where you're, what you're going for. And I apologize, like I said, it's not the prettiest, 
they're not all evenly spaced, which happens sometimes. But again, this is kind of a weird camera angle. Uh, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what's happening. And, but like I said, you can definitely see that they've pulled the edges together. Uh, we got a little bit of oozing, which could represent a little bit of blood, which is fantastic. Nice realism there. But this is your basic operation of how you're going to want to, and what you're going to want to use a stapler on, and how you're going to want to use it. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go get Gypsy, and we're going to go take a look at how to make some, uh, some muzzles for painful stuff. All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about, I apologize you can't see my face, but uh, <laughs> more importantly, you can see Gypsies. So that's this little kid right here. This is Gypsy Danger. This is my two and a half year old Brittany Spaniel. Um, she's coming along nicely. We got still a lot of training to do for end eye bowls. Um, so you know, she sits still pretty nicely. Oh, I'm just going to adjust this just a little bit so you can see her. There she is. All right, so we're going to talk about muzzles and creating a muzzle. So um, what I'm used for. What I would use, what I've used in the past with aggressive dogs at work that I can't get an actual pre-made muzzle on is some brown gauze. So this is the same stuff you should have um, or can buy from Amazon for uh, bandaging material. So you're gonna wanna get, just stay, you're gonna wanna get pretty decent length. So we can see I've got a long length here. This is because it's gonna go over the muzzle a couple of times to make sure that it's a snug fit, and then it's gonna go behind her head to tie. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is about in the middle, you got a loop, and through your loop, so you're basically got a knot that's a loose knot that you can fit over the dog's muzzle. So here, get this open a little bit, Try and make sure the ends are sort of equal length. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slip this over their snout like so, so that the cross is on top. And you're gonna come under. And you can either, you can do this as many times as you feel you need to, but what you wanna do is you wanna come across, this is the important part. So when you're tying it behind their head, I don't know if you can see, you can see I've got the lengths, the lengths crossed, and then you, so this one comes under, goes this side, this comes across here, goes on this side, and then you bring it behind their head, and you just tie, I see a knot, and then a bow, just like that. So this way, it's easy to get off, you can see she's not having any trouble while she's breathing. It's not putting too much pressure here. See, again, she can't get her mouth open. Not that, not that I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on her to do so, but she probably won't do it for me now when I was getting her used to this a second ago. She was licking her lips a little bit so that she can open her muzzle just enough, her mouth just enough to kind of lick, and this is what you want. You don't want it cutting off circulation you don't want it so tight that it's painful, but you want this tight enough. And if you have a, you know, three or four loops around the nose, around the muzzle, it'll keep them from opening their mouth. Uh, and then when you're done, now you see, I know, see, you're doing a good job, Gypsy. You're doing a good job. She's a good dog. So then, obviously, the nice thing about a bow is that when you're done, or if they start to struggle, if they get real anxious or excited you just undo it and then see you can just slip the whole thing off just like that and that is how you can build yourself its own muzzle RJ, off. build yourself your own muzzle in a time of emergency if you don't want to carry um, a pre-made muzzle you can use what you've got um, now a couple things here real quick this up. so a couple things about this a few things I would not recommend using do not use vet wrap uh, vet wrap is very sticky uh, same thing with like the elasticon if you have it 
Um, don't use tape, things that's going to be adhesive. Just because, especially if you're doing anything um, like setting a splint, um, you know, looking over your dog, uh, things like vet wrap. And we'll talk about this again in the band gene section. Vet wrap will constrict over time, and it, not a lot of time. Uh, so, plus, like I said, it's very sticky. If you don't leave yourself a tab, sometimes it can be hard to find um, the end to get it off. So, um, plus, it's very abrasive. Um, we're going to we'll talk about some of these things more in depth, but things like vet wrap, elasticon, um, I wouldn't recommend using. You can use, uh, you could even use a belt. Um, you know, um, and you can wrap around the muzzle and you can try and cinch it off. I don't, they don't really work for my dogs because they're small. Um, you can use uh, nylon rope, things like that. Um, you could probably even get away with paracord if you had it on you. Um, basically the exact same technique. Uh, just anything that can be looped around and then brought around the dog's back of the dog's head under its ears, starting from below the chin, around the back to tie you know, to keep their muzzle closed while you do something that might be painful um, so that no one gets bit and your dog doesn't bite and stuff. Um, so, uh, so that's that. I mean, that's a pretty basic one. That's why I kind of coupled it with the stapler. I figured these would be kind of shorter videos. So, um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a two minute video or something like that. So, I uh, hope these are helpful. And like I said, we'll continue on. The next one I will do. Uh, we'll start with some bandaging. I'm going to go over several different kind of bandages that can be used, not just um, bandaging over a laceration or abrasion, but we're also going to look at some um, chest bandages and things like that. Um, what you could do with certain broken limbs to keep them stable because not everything can be splinted on a dog. So we will dive into that with the next probably at least two, maybe three videos, but we'll see how we get through everything. So we'll see you next time.